Good evening and welcome everybody to Impact Church, whether you're here with us or watching by Facebook or Facebook or our website or YouTube. And I said Facebook twice because of our website and my personal page it's streaming on. Welcome. Welcome everybody here. It's good to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. Well, we got to rest a little bit from that long flight yesterday. Um, we're, we're glad to be back. We thoroughly enjoyed our time with our family and friends down in South Florida, but it's always good to be back home and uh, sitting on the front porch with a cup of coffee. Uh, in cooler weather, it was 92 degrees when we left there yesterday at lunchtime, and I went, yeah, okay. So 92 degrees, and I think, uh, what did we reach, 70-something today, if that, and uh I'm just thankful for the cooler weather. But most of all, I'm thankful that God's still large and in charge. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, I want to just go over one announcement, and that is this Saturday night. We have dinner and a movie, and it's going to start, the dinner part's going to start at 6 o'clock, and then we'll follow it up with the movie right after, which is episode 2 of The Chosen. And for those of you who have not seen episode one, and you really need to see episode one to understand the rest of it, we're going to show that at five o'clock. So that being said, I hope you can be here. Hope you can be on time. And everyone is welcome. Um, Impact Church does not believe in celebrating our enemy's day, and that's Halloween. So we're going to do something differently and take it back and enjoy ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's stand tonight and let's have our declaration and then we are going to pray. Uh, we have a, a very dear friend of mine with us tonight, um, a fellow graduate of Life Christian University, and he's going to be bringing the word tonight. So let's say this together. I will stay in Christ and draw so close to God that he knows me and I know him intimately. Through this covenant, he will anoint me, 
equip me, strengthen me, provide for me, and use me supernaturally for his kingdom and his glory. He will surround me with supernatural protection and rescue me from the catastrophic judgment that is coming to this world because of people's rebellion, blasphemy, wickedness, and hardened hearts. It will be seen, and I will know it. Godly supernatural signs and wonders will follow me because I believe, and it will cause them to repent and believe. God has prepared me for such a time as this. It's time for me to rise up and to boldly go. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we just come before you tonight with hearts full of thanksgiving, hearts full of gratitude. We thank you for what you're going to do here tonight, Holy Spirit. I pray that you anoint my brother Jeff, Father, as he comes and brings the message tonight, what you have laid on his heart. I thank you that it is a godly word, a timely word, that we are not here by accident, but we are going to receive, Father, because you said that you would send their, your word, and it would go and perform what it was set out to do, and I thank you for that tonight. And Father, for those that are sick in body, your word also says that he sent his word and healed their diseases. So even tonight, we may be talking about healing. We may not. I don't know. But the truth of the matter is, the word is still the word, and it can heal at any moment. So I thank you for that. Now, Father, bless each one that's here. Bless those that are watching. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. All right. Well, it's with great pleasure tonight, and I'm glad to see everybody again here. Uh, thank you, thanks, everybody, on uh, that's... Facebook, Facebook, our website, and YouTube for watching. All right? Without further uh, delay, uh, my brother Jeff Jenkins is going to come up and uh, speak to us tonight. Praise the Lord. Come on, brother. Thank you. Tonight, as, as we open up the scriptures, I've got... Uh, uh, I want to open up with a question. For those of y'all who are here and those who uh, may be listening, whether it be by Facebook or some other form of social media, I want to ask you one question. With everything that we see going on tonight, where is God in all this? Where is God with each and every one that's in here tonight? I'm going to answer that question for you. He's right where you want him to be right where you've asked him to be, whether in your life or outside your life, whether you're walking close to him or not. As, as we look in the scriptures tonight, I, the topic, I guess, would be called by faith. And if we look at the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, we, we see some things here, and that's not where I really want to draw the most of my text. I want to go to Romans chapter number 4, but Romans chapter number 4 is talking about by faith. But Hebrews number, chapter number 11, it, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's verse number 1. Verse number 2 says, By it, it being faith, the elders obtained a good report. The elders, if for some who may not know what the elders are, if, if you look back in the Old Testament, you see where Moses was in charge of leading the children of Israel out of uh, Egypt and bringing them into the promised land. And, and Moses was unable to enter into the promised land, so he handed off that responsibility over to to Joshua and Caleb and they brought the children of Israel on into the promised land and they were leading the children of Israel into the 31 battles that was set forth for them to uh, undergo and there were 31 cities that they were to conquer and, and at, at the conclusion of Jacob's excuse me, at the conclusion of uh, Joshua's uh, leadership of the children of Israel it was handed over to the elders. The elders would have been the, the 70 members of the representation, the representing the, the tribes, and the elders are the ones that followed the leadership of the Lord, and they did that primarily at that point in time 
by what Moses had established, what had been written in the law, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. And this is what they did. They were following the instructions that God laid out before them. <clears throat> and, and, and if we follow God's instructions, then the, the providing hand of God will be upon our life. God's provisions will, will, will supply our every need. God's protection will keep us from the enemy. I, I know over in the book of, um, in, the, in the Old Testament, in uh, Psalms chapter number 91, verse number 7, it talks about a thousand shall fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but the plague shall not come nigh my dwelling. Why is that? That's because you subject yourself to the provisions that God provides for you. If you subject yourself to God, he will protect you among, with everything that comes our way. And if we look at Hebrews chapter number 11, we see <clears throat> verse number 3, it says, Through faith, the subject of tonight's lesson, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of those things which do appear. And if we look back in history, we can see where Einstein, who was one of, a very brilliant man, I believe his IQ was somewhere in the neighborhood of 160, and he, he was brilliant, but he, to everything that I've read and everything I understand, he had never professed Christ as his Savior. But he did say this, all things made are made with the pure, invisible energy we know this because that's scripture everything that was created was created by Christ himself he created everything he created everything from nothing and if we look verse number 4 says by faith Abel offered up unto God a more excellent sacrifice verse number 5 by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Verse number seven, by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. What was that? That was the flood that came. Verse number eight, by faith Abraham. Verse number 11, by faith Sarah. Verse number 20, by faith Isaac. Bless Jacob. Verse number 21, by faith Jacob. Verse 22, by faith Joseph. Verse number 24, by faith, Moses. What is this all saying? It's saying they accepted God's word as being God's word. At that time, they didn't have the scriptures to read like we do, but they accepted what God said, and they performed what God told them to do. And verse number 31 is probably one of my most favorite verses in this entire chapter. It said, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies and with peace. Rahab, who was a lady that we probably would not want to have any dealings with her during the daytime hours. Some of the men might go visit her at night under the cover of darkness so nobody could see what she was doing, what they were doing. But Rahab, someone who realized who God really was. She gave herself over to God. And not only that, she became in the lineage of Jesus Christ. She, she married Obed, which would have been King David's granddad. And we know that Jesus is of the lineage of David. By faith, she gave herself over to God, and God used her in a mighty way. By faith, if we give ourselves over to God, God's going to use it, will use us in a mighty way. Now, if we look at Romans chapter number four, and if everyone would turn their script, turn their text to there, um, starting with verse number one, and this is talking about Abraham, what he did by faith. It opens up and says, What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? What did Abraham find? He found the blessings of God by giving himself over to the word of God. God protected Abraham. God blessed Abraham. Verse number two says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath therefore 
no glory, but not before God. Verse number three. For what saith the scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, if we look over in Romans chapter number nine, verse number 10, this is telling us the plan of salvation in a nutshell. It says, if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Was anyone there when Christ was crucified? Was anyone there when, were any of us there when Christ was risen from the dead? Any of us? Nope. We, we've, got, we've got the wit, what the witnesses have told us. We've got what the scriptures have told us. But if we accept Christ as our Savior, we're going to have to do it by faith. We're going to have to believe these witnesses, the accounts of these witnesses are true. We're going to have to believe that this word that we're reading here tonight is true. We're going to have to believe what God speaks to us is true. We're going to have to trust what God says, and trust is having faith. We're going to have to have faith just like Abraham. He heard the word of God, and it, there was a point in time that he actually come face to face with the pre-incarnate Christ, which would have been a theophany. But yes, God did speak to him, and he spoke to him as an angel. God spoke to him in his spirit, but he had to follow what the voice of God told him. If we continue to look, if we look on down to verse number 17, was Romans chapter 1, verse number 17, and Habakkuk 2, 4, Hebrews 10, 38, in Galatians 3.11, it tells us that the just shall live by faith. There's things that we can't explain. There's things that we'll never understand. There's things that, that we do, and if the world was to look at what we do, they would sit and scratch our heads and laugh at us. And by the way, they do. They do. But why do they do it? Various reasons, I'm sure. But why do we do what we do? By faith. Because of what Christ has spoken to us. I, I remember when I got saved, I felt something deep in my, my heart. I couldn't explain and I knew something had to be done. And by faith, I took the word of God as being true. Not understanding it at the young age that I got saved. I couldn't, I, to my knowledge, I'd probably never read more than three or four verses at a time. Uh, I've never read anything in the scriptures that made me understand anything about my condition. But one day, I heard the preacher preach, and it pricked my heart. The Holy Spirit pricked my heart, and by faith, I accepted the plan of salvation. If, if we look in verses in Romans chapter number 4, if we look at verses 4 through 7, it, it's talking about, well, let's just read it. For now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace. Okay. Paul writes in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8, says, For by grace you are saved through faith. It's the gift of God not of works. It's by faith. Verse number five. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, in the days of Abraham and, and, and prior to the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ and those who wanted to come to God had to make an annual sacrifice and, and they got their sins covered. Not forgiven. Their sins were covered by the blood of, of the animal that was slain. Today, we accept Christ by grace through faith and our sins are forgiven. Our past sins, our present sins, our future sins, they were all nailed to the cross. By faith, we accept this. 
Verse number six says, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, blessed are those who iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. David understood that the covering of sins from, from the lamb that was slain was just a foretelling of the lamb that was to come and his sins were going to be forgiven. And if we look at verse number 8, this is one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. It said, Blessed is the man in whom the Lord will impute, will not impute sin. And if you look up the word impute in, in, the, uh, in your concordance, it, it tells us, it's G3049, that's in the Greek, it means to take inventory. So if we look at it like this, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not take inventory of his sins. Why will God not take inventory of our sins? Because when he looks at us, he does not see our sins. He sees the blood of his son, and that what is our righteousness. He does not see our sins. He does not see the long list of things that I may have done as a child or may have done as a young adult or as I may be doing today. He doesn't see the things that I've failed to do that I should have done. He doesn't see this long list of things that you and I know that we may have done. All that he sees is his son. We are in him and he is in us. As a matter of fact, 1 John Chapter number I should have made a note of this and I did not but it talks about Jesus being in us and we're in him and by, because of that the devil has no right to us we give ourselves over to the Lord. Anyway, continuing on, verses 10, verses 10 and 11, it talks about how is it, how was it then reckoned, question mark, when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Verse number 11, and he received a sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith, and he had yet been uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. You see, for the male, it was, it was a sign unto God, and it was given to Abraham that all males should be circumcised. But Abraham was not circumcised. And, and as, we come, as we come forward to getting past the law and we're looking into, the, into grace and, and the time of the uh, epistles that after Christ had rose from the dead, the circumcision then was to take place not on the foreskin but in the heart. It's supposed to take place in the heart. We're supposed to become a different creature. Paul wrote over in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And, and verses number 13 through 16 here in Romans, we're starting to see how all this lines up with us. And it says, Verse number 13, for the promises that should be the heir of this of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. See, everything that God promised Abraham was not because of the law. It wasn't because of his works, his works being Abraham's works. It wasn't because Abraham went out and sacrificed uh, a great sacrifice. It wasn't because Abraham went and delivered Lot from, from the kings of, of Sodom and down in the land of Gomorrah. It wasn't because of all of his good works. It was all because of his faith. 
Our salvation is not predicated upon anything that we can do. Our salvation doesn't talk, does, it's not predicated on us tithing to the church, us, us giving alms to the poor, or us being kind to, to people wanting to cross the street. It's all predicated upon our faith in Jesus Christ. Verse number 16 says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. God's grace is wonderful. To the end of the promise might be secure to all seed, not only to that which is of the law. And if you're reading the New Testament, You'll find, especially in the writings of Paul, we'll find a pattern here. Paul talks about those of the law, or he talks about those of the circumcision. He, when he speaks of those of the circumcision or those of the law, he's talking about the Jewish people. If he talks about those who are not of the law, maybe of grace, or those of the uncircumcision, he's speaking about the Gentiles. And here's what he's saying here. He says, not only to those that is of the law, not only to the Jews were the promises given, but they were given to those who would accept Christ as Savior. So all the promises that God gave to Abraham, if we accept Christ as our Savior, are given to us as well. Because he goes on to say here, but, not all, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. We find if, if we look over in Galatians chapter number 3, God, Paul is writing to the, to the churches there in Galatia, and he says... Verse number 11, and we touched off on this earlier, it says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Now, to live by faith, Jesus said over, when, he was talk, when he was talking to the disciples over in John chapter 10, verse number 10, he says, talked about, he's speaking of the enemy, he says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy but Christ said, but I have come that you may have life and may have it more abundantly. Jesus wants to give us life, and he has given us this life if only we'd accept it. In verse number 16, going on down to verse number 16 of what Paul wrote right here in, in Galatians, he said, now to Abraham and to his seed, and this seed here is talking about the spiritual seed of Abraham, for if we look on over to verse number 29, we can see that, that's exactly what he's talking about. Verse number 29 said, And if you be Christ, that's a possessive word there, Christ with apostrophe S, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. So now to Abraham and to his seed, his spiritual seed, those who wants to receive the promises that God gave to Abraham, and if we've been born again, that is speaking directly to us. He said not to the seeds as of many, but as of one, and the seed which is, which is Christ. So if we look at what God gave Abraham, and everything that he promised Abraham, everything that he gave Abraham is ours. What is some of the promises that God gave to Abraham? Well, if we look in First Peter chapter one, excuse, yeah, chapter one, verse number twenty-three, it says, "Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever." The word of God is none other than Jesus Christ. Everything that we got, we've got through Him, through Him, and by Him. Verse number 17 says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, for for whom he believed, 
even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which are not as though they were. What we understand from this, God gave Abraham some promises. He gave him the promise of, of, the, of the, his son Isaac when he was 75. He said Isaac would, he, he would have a son. And if we look at Abraham's life, we see that he had more than one son. But when it come time for God, when God spoke to Abraham, when it come time to take his son up on Mount Moriah to sacrifice him, God told him to take thy son, thy only son. And he's talking about the son of promise, which was Isaac. But actually, Abraham had more than one son. He actually had more than two sons. He had eight. And we see that. So we see that God blessed him not only physically, and I want to look at the physical things, but he talked about the spiritual stuff too. But the physical blessings that God gave Abraham, here's a man who was 99 years old when he conceived, when he came with his wife, his wife conceived to have Isaac. A man that was probably far past his prime as far as child being able to impregnate a woman. But God blessed him with that. And that's what verse number 17 is talking about. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even though who was quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Abraham took what God told him and accepted his truth. Even though Abraham may have been past the age of fathering a child, God knew he gave him a promise, and he accepted that promise. And not only did he accept that promise, God knew, Abraham knew that God would, would allow it to happen, which shows us something. For those who are in here and those who are listening, here's something to remember. God does not call those who have abilities to do things. Those he, who he calls, he gives them the ability to what he wants them to do. Verse number 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall the seed be. Abraham believed God. Even though he might have saw no hope in his body, he trusted God to fulfill what he promised. And if God gives us a promise, and he will, and he will. He'll give us a promise. He, he, he gives us instruction. He gives us directions on things that he wants us to do. And there's times it may not seem possible, but God makes it happen if we trust. Verse number 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, even though his body might not have been physically, in his own mind, able to do what God promised, he wasn't weak in faith. He kept trusting. That promise came to him when he was age 75. It was 24 years later that that promise came to fruition. And it was nine months later before he saw the birth of that son. He was 100. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in the faith, giving glory to God. No wonder Abraham is the patriarch of the Jewish nation. No wonder Ab they look at Abraham because of his faith. They look at Abraham because of his faith. They look at Isaac, it's the promised seed. They look at Jacob as being the father of the 12 nations. The 12 tribes. Verse number 22. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. 
Again, the word imputed means inventory. What God did because of Abraham's faith, he looked at Abraham and all the blessings that was given to Jesus Christ, all the blessings that Jesus Christ offers to to those who will receive him as Lord and Savior, was placed upon Abraham. And when God looked at Abraham, even though his son had not yet came, all he saw was the promise of his son being upon Abraham's life. Now, it is not written for this sake alone that it was imputed to him, meaning it's not this inventory, this blessed inventory is not just given to Abraham alone, but it's given to whosoever will. As John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, this imputed righteousness is given to whosoever will receive it. Verse number 24, But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. See, this is Paul talking to every member of the body of Christ. Everyone who would accept Christ as Lord and Savior, this righteousness is imputed to us. This inventory of righteousness, this inventory of perfection, this inventory that we look like Jesus Christ, but we are. We're heirs and joint heirs with the blessings of Christ. With the blessings that God would give to his son, he's given to those who accept his son. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe, if we believe on him, raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. If we believe on the one who raised Jesus from the dead, then all this is imputed to us. And in verse number 25, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Our offenses was our sins. They were nailed to the cross. And because our sins were nailed to the cross, we are justified. God looks at us just as if we have never sinned. When God looks at us, again, he does not see us. He sees his son. He sees a perfect individual, even though we may be disfigured in in our body, even though we may be disfigured in our spirit. We may have committed a lot of sin, but they're all forgiven if we accept Christ as our Savior. God looks at us and sees us just as if we had never sinned, just like he did his son. And again, this goes back to the promise that is spoken of in 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed. When we're born, that is the moment we start to die. How long does it take for us to die? Only God knows. But sooner or later, if Christ doesn't come back and gather the church away, we're all going to die. But being born of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth, and abideth forever. If Jesus lives in our heart, we shall never see death spiritually. If Jesus lives in our heart, we're going to live and abide with him forever. Appreciate it. Praise God. By faith. By faith. And I've always told you, by faith, you sit down in those chairs believing that they're going to hold you. I should do to you what our youth pastor did to us one time. Pull all the screws out of them and leave them sitting up like they're just fine. Some of you would definitely be falling and cannot get up. But you did. You sat down thinking, that's the norm. I wish we could get to that point in our spiritual walk or when God tells us to do something, we just do it without even thinking about it. That would definitely be faith. Amen? I want to say something to you tonight. It's Jeff always brings a lot of word and always brings a lot of scripture. But some of the scriptures he brought up tonight, I actually 
uh, had on another slide. And we've been using this slide because I believe that every chance and every opportunity that we get, we should always offer people an opportunity of salvation. There shouldn't be a time that we have a service that we don't say, listen, if there's anybody in here or anybody watching that has never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it would be a great time to do it. And we always talk about these, these scriptures, 1 John 1, 6 through 9. The famous one is verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, maybe you think you didn't sin, but um, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, what's sin? For a man who knows to do good and doesn't do it, that's sin. And I'm thankful that one day I confessed with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believed in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. See, yours can be too. And any time that you make a mistake, all you have to do is say, Father, forgive me. Just forgive me. I blew it. And what does it say? He'll cleanse you and put you right back in the right standing. So if there's anybody that uh, has never accepted Jesus Christ. Their birth. I, I know everybody that's in this sanctuary tonight. And I know all of you in here have Jesus in your heart. But maybe somebody's watching tonight by Facebook or on our website or YouTube and they don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they're probably going, well, wait a minute. How do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? It's simple. All you do is say this prayer. All you have to do is say the prayer that's on your screen right now. And just say, Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. I want forgiveness of all my sins. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I give you my life to do with as you wish. I want Jesus to come into my life and into my heart. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. See, if you say that prayer, man, you've got a brand new start. Old is over. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Brother Jeff, thank you so much for being here tonight. And uh, right now it's offering time. So I'm going to ask you to get that ready. I had to go get mine. I went out, of, went out of screen for a second. It's all good. So if you have your tithe and offering, get hold of it. For those of you who are watching uh, on those different media platforms, all you have to do is go to our website, makeanimpact.us slash giving, or go to our website and there will be a tab for giving. And if you still want to send it in by United States Postal Service. We won't lose your money, but never mind. I won't go there. They've lost money from me before. I know nobody else has had that problem. But anyhow, we thank you. We, we have people still giving. And by the way, I want to thank those that, down, that were down in South Florida at the church that we were ministering at who gave for this church toward our building fund. So thank you very much for that. God bless you. I hope to have more information in the future about some things that are going down. Uh, just be praying. Continue to pray for us. But right now, if you have your tithe and offering, get it in your hand, and let's pray over it. Uh, Father, we bring the tithe and offering into the storehouse. Father, we know that this is just an awesome time of worship to you. So many people are being ruled by money, Father. And so many people hoard the things that you've given them. But I thank you, Father, that you made us a promise. When you said, test me in this and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain. And Father, there's people tonight that need blessings. They need you to move in their life. And I thank you for covenant relationship. I thank you, Father, that we never go without. You've always provided every single one of our, our needs. And I thank you for that. Bless the people tonight, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Seriously. God loves you. This world hates you. The devil hates your guts and he wants to steal from you kill you and destroy you 
But my Bible says that God came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. And I'm thankful for that tonight. I'm thankful. You watching by Facebook, you watching out there in, in TV land, wherever that might be, God really does love you. And he's got a plan for you. He's got purpose and destiny and meaning for your life. You are not, I feel like this really strongly right now, you are not a mistake. Don't allow the enemy any longer to lie to you. Because I know what my heavenly father says. He goes, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Not to harm you, but to bless you and to bring you to a good end. So, get alone with God. Tell that devil to leave you alone. Hmm. I'm feeling, y'all just, you know where I'm going right now. Holy Spirit's all over me. Suicide's not the answer. It's not the answer. It's a temporary solution that gives you a permanent result. And that permanent result, unless it's with Jesus Christ, is not a good one. So I beg you, I plead with you right now to accept Jesus and let him turn your life around. Only he can do that. Not your mom, not your dad, not alcohol, not drugs, none of it. Only Jesus can. And once he does, oh boy, you will never, ever, ever be the same. Because I know for sure that he does love you. Hmm. Thank you, Father. All right, people, let's stand and let's have our benediction. I want to remind everybody, we're supposed to love God, love people, and make an impact. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha Ya'er Adonai pana v'lecha v'yichuneka Yisa Adonai pana v'lecha v'yasem lecha shalom The Lord bless you and keep you The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace